Um, good evening, and thank you, Peter, for that very kind introduction. Um, thank you guys all for being here today. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about some of our work um, focused on the previously unexplored benefits um, of exercise. And so as we all know, exercise is critical in the prevention of type 2 diabetes. And as, as we as a population have become more sedentary, exercise is really critical um, to, to prevent type 2 diabetes and obesity. Uh, my lab focuses on exercise, more specifically the, the novel molecular actions of exercise that can improve metabolic health. And I'm going to talk to you today about two distinct projects in the lab. Um, the first looking at exercise and how it affects fat or adipose tissue to improve metabolic health. And the second looking at how maternal exercise uh, can alter the composition of breast milk, which improves the metabolic health of offspring. So first to talk about exercise in, in fat. Um, typically when we think about exercise, we think about how exercise affects your skeletal muscle, which of course it does. But we now know that exercise actually influences almost every tissue in the body. And we're really interested in how exercise could affect your fat. Uh, when we talk about fat in the body, it's kind of broken down into two different depots, your white fat and your brown fat. Um, and your, your white fat is kind of the tissue that we all try to get rid of. It's the reason why a lot of us exercise. Uh, and there are two different kinds of white fat. Um, there's your visceral fat, um, this is your, your belly fat. Um, people who have an accumulation of this type of, of fat have what we call apple obesity. And this is linked to a high risk um, for the development of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. The other type of white fat is called your subcutaneous fat, and this is your flank fat. People who accumulate this type of adipose tissue have a, uh, a pear-shaped obesity. And this type of fat is actually correlated with a lower risk for development of type 2 diabetes and obesity uh, and insulin resistance. The second type of fat in your body is called brown fat. And in, in contrast to white fat, brown fat is an energy burning tissue. This means that it produces heat, it gets rid of energy. And work in our lab has shown that when you increase the amount of brown fat, you actually decrease the amount of white fat in the body. Um, it improves glucose tolerance, it decreases insulin resistance, but we know that obesity is correlated with a decrease in, in brown fat. Um, and importantly, we also know that brown fat decreases with age. In fact, uh, human subjects over the age of 65 have only 40% of the detectable brown fat that humans under the age of 50 do. And so this has led to a really important question in the field, and how do we increase bat mass and activity? How do we increase this brown fat? And um, I'm, I'm an exercise physiologist by training, and so I always think that exercise is going to save the world. So we kind of decided to look and see what were the effects of exercise on brown fat. To do this initially, we took human subjects. Um, these were young male and female subjects. We had them undergo an acute bout of exercise, and we took their blood immediately before and right after exercise. Um, and we took their blood and we ran it on this machine called, called a mass spectrometer. And this basically allows us to detect everything that we see in the blood. And what we found was that immediately after exercise, we saw an increase in this lipid that's called 12-13-dihome. And this lipid happens to be released from brown fat. Interestingly, we saw that it was increased in male subjects and in female subjects. And this was the first data to show that exercise could alter the endocrine profile of brown fat. And importantly, that this occurred in both male and female subjects. So what is 12-13-dihome? Well, it's a, a bit of a mouthful. Um, the, the technical name is 12-13-dihydroxy-9-z-octadecanoic acid. I had to write that down so I could remember it. Um, and this basically means that it's a, it's a lipid that's released from brown fat with exercise. And what is a lipokine? Well, it's a lipid that acts like a hormone. So it's released from the brown fat and it talks to other tissues. And in this case, we think that it talks to skeletal muscle. Um, other work in our lab has shown that it, it works to decrease triglycerides in the blood and that an increase in this lipid actually increases skeletal muscle fatty acid uptake. So we think that it's a really potential, has a, a strong potential as a therapeutic to treat both type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So knowing that brown fat decreases with age, we also want to look at the effect of this lipid in different age, age populations. So we looked in a group of younger male subjects, these were age 24 to 40, and a group of older subjects age 65 to 90. We again took their blood before and after exercise. And what we saw was that the older subjects had a decrease in the pre-exercise values of this lipid, but importantly, both the younger subjects and the older subjects had an increase with this lipid after exercise. And this indicated that the brown fat could be stimulated with exercise regardless of age. We were really excited about these data, but they were looking at the effects of an acute bout of exercise. So we wanted to see what happened in, in chronic exercise in people who were, were chronically active. And so we looked in our younger, so our under 40 population and our older population, age 65 to 90, and what we saw was that in our, our younger active group, they had a significant increase in this lipid um, at baseline. 
Interestingly, the older sedentary population had a significant decrease in this lipid at baseline. But if the subjects were active, their levels of this lipid were actually increased to that of the young sedentary subjects. And so what this showed to us is since this lipid comes from brown fat, and brown fat decreases with age, is that exercise can actually negate the effect of brown fat on aging. Sorry, of aging on brown fat. And so what was really exciting about these data is that we showed that this lipid is increased in both male and female subjects. It's decreased with age, but increased with exercise. It works to increase um, skeletal muscle fatty acid uptake and decrease circulating triglycerides. And we really think that it has the potential as a therapeutic tool to combat both type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. I'm going to switch gears now and kind of talk about a second project. And this is looking at the effect of maternal exercise and how it can alter the composition of breast milk, which can improve the metabolic health of adult offspring. And I've always been interested in, in exercise research, um, and I, I really became interested in this project a couple years ago when I was pregnant with this guy. Um, you can see him just kind of cheesing out on the, on the left and then after his first uh, Iron Kids race this summer. And so as we started to get into this project, we, we talked about the development of type 2 diabetes. And we know that there are several components that contribute to the development of type 2 diabetes. Genetics play a role, your adult lifestyle plays a role, as we've already kind of touched on tonight, your diet, your lifestyle, how active you are. But one other component is your early life environment. And what this means is that the things that your mom did when she was pregnant with you, what she ate, how much she exercised, all contribute to how, how your metabolic health is when you're an adult. And in fact, several studies have shown that maternal overnutrition, so if a mom eats too much, results in impaired metabolic health of the adult offspring. Maternal undernutrition, if a mom doesn't eat enough, also results in impaired metabolic health of their adult offspring. And what we wanted to ask is, what happens if a mom exercises while she's pregnant? What's the effect of that on their adult offspring? So to do this using a mouse model, what we showed is that if a mom moderately exercises before and during pregnancy, their adult offspring have improved glucose tolerance, decreased body weight, decreased percent body fat, improved insulin sensitivity, improved cardiovascular function, and importantly, maternal exercise negated the detrimental effects of a maternal high-fat diet. And what was really interesting is that in this mouse study, we saw this effect at 52 weeks of age in the mice. And this correlates roughly to 45 to 55 years of age in an adult human. So we then wanted to ask, why is this happening? What is maternal exercise doing that's causing a change that's causing these improvements in offspring health? And so we kicked around a few ideas and thought, well, maybe we'll look at the milk. Maybe there could be exercise adaptations to the milk responsible for this effect. So to do this experiment, again, we went to our mouse model. And we took moms that were, were sedentary, and moms that were exercise trained, and we swapped their litters. So the offspring from the sedentary moms drank the milk from the trained moms, and the offspring from the trained moms drank the milk from the sedentary moms. Then we followed these mice into adulthood, and what we found that is if the offspring drank the trained milk, so the milk from the exercise trained moms, they had improved glucose tolerance, decreased body weight, decreased percent body fat, improved insulin sensitivity, um, and improved cardiovascular function. And so these are the first data to show that it's the milk. There's something happening with maternal exercise that's causing these adaptations in the breast milk that can improve metabolic health even into adulthood. We were curious as to why this was happening, and so we analyzed the various components of the milk. And what we saw was that there was a sugar, this complex sugar, that was increased um, with exercise. It was decreased in the moms that were fed a high-fat diet. And importantly, if the moms were fed a high-fat diet and exercised, it was then restored. Now, what's interesting about this sugar is that it's present um, in mouse milk and in human milk. But interestingly, it's not a component of bovine milk, so it's not found in formula. We then wanted to ask if increasing this sugar in mice would be enough to promote their or to improve their metabolic health into adulthood. So we took moms that were fed a high-fat diet and we supplemented their offspring um, with either this, this complex sugar just during their nursing period or with a bolus of saline. And what we found when we followed these offspring into adulthood is that if they were fed this complex sugar, they had improved glucose tolerance, decreased body weight, decreased percent body fat, and improved insulin sensitivity. And so these data really show um, that exercise-induced changes to the milk can improve the metabolic health of the adult offspring. And maternal exercise is really important um, in promoting metabolic health of adult offspring. 
So in conclusion, I hope what I've shown you today in kind of a, a snapshot of work from my lab is that using an exercise model, we've identified a few different therapeutic tools that we really think, um, if translatable to humans, will have enormous implications for the prevention of obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Um, I just want to thank my lab really quickly, as well as all the other people kind of around the country who've contributed to this work. Um, and then with a lovely uh, picture from the stadium right outside, right outside of our building. And, and thank you guys, because really without people like you, a lot of this work wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much.